Maybe the thing you're most scared of is exactly what you should I do. I love what I do still. I have passion it for it. Whatever it was, I, I just tried to dominate it. In a place I've always been trying to get to. My style is jazz. My style is raw graffiti on a wall. My style is the dope fiend nodding off in the corner. My style is the story of that guy's life because that guy was my neighbor. My style is my best friend when I'm a kid, his mother overdosing and him handling it like a man. Those things, they will go ignored if I don't say nothing about them. My name is Nasir Jones. I make music, hip hop music. Like, I want to come on to, you know, after I'm introduced or whatever, I want to come on to that piano. To, you know, play that again? Maybe the first hip hop show I went to was in Queensbridge Park. I was young, and my brother was young, and it eventually got shot up. But before the, the mayhem, earlier that evening, MC Shan performed. When Shan touched the stage, it was serious. Never heard anything like that in my life. We had great aspirations to get into something that would change our lives. You know, I, I knew that that was the life for me. See, I think we should be doing the entire Life is Good album. Can I make a request? I'm coming to the show. I just want to hear your matter, though. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> You know, work all hard and it all boils down to one record. When I think of Nas, that's what I think of. Yeah. How, what was the concept behind that, that cover? You know, my era was the era of, you know, breaking it all down to what's the real. It wasn't about the star, it was about the man. They say this album changed hip hop because it was the first hip-hop album with multiple big producers. It hadn't been done. Those four, Pete Rock, Lars Professor, Premier, and Q-Tip were the greatest yeah. and are the greatest, so. You talk about Queensbridge all the time. Is Queensbridge sort of at the heart of, of your music? Yeah, Queensbridge is the heart of my music. I'll describe it like there's broken glass all over the ground. Everywhere you looked, it was sparkling in the sun like diamonds in the street. Somehow that became just the normal gravel that you, you know, you learned to walk on. You had everything right there. A place that people hung out, played radios, played the music, hustled, went to work, went to school, uh, fought. Around the uh, early 90s, it was really out of control. Everyone had the hand on the gun. That was just the life we was living pretty fast. I'm gonna tell you right now, I'll tell you right now, this, the, the, when we get this tight, yeah, this ain't even fair. I might be able to retire off this album. Live with Barbecue was the first time you were ever on a song. What was that like when you first heard that? When I first heard Live at the Barbecue on the radio, I was just walking through my neighborhood and I saw a bunch of older guys. It was late night. As I'm walking by, I hear the song. And I'm like, wow, I'm telling some of the guys that's me. But you know, the older, faded, they're halfway listening to me. So they're like, yeah, okay, cool. And they're going back to their conversation. They're not listening, but it didn't matter. I heard me. They walked back to my block. I was sort of in a daze, like, it's happening. Okay, it's happening. I'm in rap now. I'm, I'm a part of this rap thing. That was my dream, just that. So I'm like, all right, this is perfect. This is actually perfect. I've opened the door, the door has opened for me to have a chance to be heard 
and I will be a name known in this great thing called rap. My goal was to be the best, to change the game. I realized I could do that. At that point, I said, nah, no one can tell me anything now. I got it. I know what it takes. I got what it takes.